Okay, see Lindelof videos. Solve absolute value equations and talk nice to your cast. I wanted to go over some different ways to use your calculator to solve absolute value equations, and I didn't want to beat you to death with it because it's not super difficult, but there are some variations, so let's look at a couple. Uh, so here's just a simple example, and I didn't want to go through too many with you. So here's one. I want to solve the absolute value of x is equal to 3. My variable is x, so I put in the x. Can enter and I get that back. So let me just show you an easy way to do a, an example that's a little bit more difficult. So I'm going to use solve again. I'm going to type in the word solve. As I type the E, the, the letters go from italics to standard, which means your calculator understands that you're asking it to do something. And what I want to do is I want to ask it a question that's a little bit more complex than the last one. I want the absolute value of the numerator but not the denominator. So what I did was I hit control division and it set up this fraction. So in the numerator, I'm going to type an absolute value because I want the absolute value of the numerator but not the denominator. And I'm going to name that variable x again. Close this up. And then I'm going to use my down cursor to get to the denominator here. And from here, I'm going to use the right cursor again to get over. I'm going to hit equal to, which is here. And then, I don't know, maybe 5, if that's OK. So remember, I have this all set up. I have the absolute value only of the numerator, but not of the denominator. I typed in my equal sign, right? My variable is x, so I'm going to put in comma x. Variables have to match. If they don't, the calculator will give you like some weird answer, like no solution. And it's not because there's, well, it is because there's no solution, but it's not because what you're doing doesn't have a solution. It's because you ask it the question in a, in a, in a way that it couldn't interpret. So here we go. And that's the answer we kind of expected, right? So let's do one more example. In this one, we want to take, we want the absolute value of the numerator and the denominator. So it looks really similar. So I'm going to hit the solve function. This time I'm going to get there a different way. I'm going to use the menu key. And you can see I already have solve here. I use this a lot, so my cursor happened to already be on it. You can just tap it. And so there it is right there, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with absolute value, A, B, A, A, B, S, right? I'm going to open my parentheses, right? But I want absolute value of this whole thing, so I'm going to hit control division. Now you see the absolute value is around the whole argument. The argument is the numerator and the denominator. And I'm going to make that argument, um, I don't know, uh, x over 7, yeah? So x down cursor, well, that didn't work, did it? So let's do it again. x down cursor over 7. But look what else I can do. So I'm going to take my cursor here and I'm going to go over once. See, I'm still inside the argument. I want to get outside the argument. If you don't go outside the argument, you're asking it a question that I don't think you mean to ask. So in, in this case, I want to say maybe minus 8. So I do minus 8. Please notice that the negative 8, the minus 8, is not inside the argument. If it was, it, you would be asking it a different question. All right? Now, I'm going to go ahead and finish my question, which is, when does that equal negative 7? That's a crap. No, it's not. It's a good answer. Negative 7. Enter. Oh, at negative 7, right? Almost got me. Comma. Comma. X. Hit enter. And that does make sense. I kind of I got lost. I was like, oh, shoot. I have this negative over here, but it did go positive. It works out. Hopefully, you can see example 1. Took the absolute value of the denominator, of, excuse me, of the numerator only. In, this, in the third example, we took of the whole thing. Last example, I promise, I really think this is worth it because if you get this, man, you can crush some stuff. So here I'm going to go back to menu. I'm going to use my, use my solve function again, right? This time, I want it to look a little bit different. So I'm going to set up this again, control division, but check this out. I'm going to do ABS, absolute value, open parentheses of, let's say, choose A, A, Minus five. If you wonder where I'm getting these problems, I'm getting them from CUDA Software, which you can go on at any time, CUDAsoftware.com, and they have a lot of actually pretty good questions. Go back to my calculator. I want to go down to the bottom, and I'm going to have that over eight. So now we have a term as our argument. A minus five is our argument, right? So I'm going to slide over here. I'm going to slide over here. So I'm using my right cursor, right? And I'm going to hit my equal sign equals. And what did they want to equal? equals 5. Check me out. Super important. We talked about not confusing our calculator and speaking clearly to it. And if I could hit this button, right? 
remember our variable was x here, x, so we matched x, x, so we matched x, x, so we matched x here. Our variable is a, so you have to match it with a. If I seems like I'm uh, making fun, I'm not. It's just these are the kind of mistakes that that really even really good students make. So hopefully this is helpful. And here we go, and we have an answer. All right, and you can go back and test these answers if you want to. So here are three or four examples of how you would use the solve and absolute value um, components of your uh, TI Inspire cast to solve problems. I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Hey, I haven't been around for a while, so if you haven't already subscribed, please do. Thanks.